now to get the Manson. Let's hop onto the rift. It's a fair bit of value, but it's not going to get out of the Void Rush. That is First Blood going over to the Rek'Sai. Yeah, it looks like he just scared that perhaps a flash would come out there, so just uses the ultimate to guarantee the kill. Let's see whether that is going to be the same thing as Doran is in trouble. He is going to be here. Flash out from uh, Faker, but there's the audacious charge from Peanut. They get the knockoff, and Faker is going to be taken down, and Emperor's Divide immediately follows. Ona this time is going to be able to flash. He's going to be avoided. Ona was taking up the turret for such a long time, though, and is just going to fall down. Viper just great positioning here. Gumiushi Carrier just a little bit late to the party. Uh, owner, a bit of a, a miss on this one. Well, so Mega Deathrock, can he get flashed there? That is a lot of respect given. And now Destiny coming on through. Zayas will find the gold card, and that is a very comfortable kill. Snare should be able to keep Viper safe, but that is still so much damage done. And to avoid the damage, Hook is going to be there under Peanut, though, and he should go down. Empress Divide lands on almost everyone, and there goes the Jinx, but Viper falls immediately afterwards, and now the damage is just seconds. Zayas zones in on it, and that will be the lockdown of the Emperor. And there is the damage gone. No one else able to offer anything back. And Delight, yeah, he's tanky. He lasts a little bit longer, but he will still be going down. And T1 wiped the fight. Uh, they're going to clear this vision, but starting the Baron, I mean, T1... It's his way out as well, but still, Doran able to lock that one down. Zayus is now in the front line. This is dangerous, but the Jinx is now going to get excited. That is the second kill as the front line has been wiped out. And now Doran, the last one remaining with any uh, kind of health bar. Going to try to take him down, and they are going to be able to do so. There is two kills to start this one off. And finally, Humble Life Esports have found a team fight. They'll get the knockup. Empress Divide onto both damage dealers. Still, it's a double kill for Faker, but it shouldn't be a one fight here for T1. As Doran, Zekker, and Peanut are just going to try and take him down. There's the knockup. Wind becomes lightning indeed, and there is the takedown. Still, he's able to kite this one out. The flash forward from Peanut, and Doran's able to lock that one down. But now the package is absolutely gigantic. Still, Doran just shrugs it off. They are able to take down Peanut, but Empress Divide connects. And that is the wipeout for Humble Life. They are looking to try and end this game. 9,600 in damage for Faker on the Corky. The package is big, but it's not big enough. And it looks like it might be the end of his winning streak here on said champion as Hanwha Light. And now Faker's teleported over. Is this the count to win now for T1 as the gold card? He's going to connect. Doran is not able to get out of this one. And that's Faker locking that one down. Remember, guys, the Baron is still Towards up. Towards that uh, exposed inhibitor, but there are still inner turrets. Una to try and taxi out, but the double knockoff is fantastic from Doran. They take down the Thresh and the Rel, and now Fumiyushi is exposed. He's going to get snared. And now the game is finally over. Humble Life Esports, it looked dicey after that push failed. But this time around, the Nexus will go down. We'll break the streak. And look at the damage numbers. It doesn't look like the winning team. That top side, see whether that Jax can actually find some value against the Twisted. Comes out of nowhere. Thanks for that one, Jonas Strong, for the jump scares. They do find the permafrost onto owner. The flashes come forward. And there is First Blood going to the Sejuani. The punishment and the long con by Delight here towards the top side of the map. 50% health. And now Zayas is potentially in trouble. Finds a gold card onto Peanut, who will throw out the ulti and eventually flashes his way out. Still, Owner is able to lock down the kill. Now, Doran, he's going to get taken down as well. The gold card is going to connect, and he's not going to be able to get the follow-up. And T1, they punish hard. As Doran is here on this top side, doesn't have his teleport available. The Twisted Fate still on top side of the map as well. Also fantastic, and the burst fire is there. Carrier going to get taken down into his zombie form, and he's going to find no value. And Wolf, are we certifying it? I'm going to certify it. I've got my stamp out right here. and just slamming it down on the table. There is the package delivered right underneath the turret. No one's gone down just yet, though. Another hook is going to connect as they're trying to juggle. And there is the kill going over to Delight. Echo's coming up. Yeah. Echo's just going to deliver him to the rest of Home Alive, and Viper is now on a killing spree. It's a disaster for T1. Yeah, that's a third kill for the Zeri, and that's, that means no Dragon Contest here whatsoever. They As Viper tanks a casual turret shot. He's in a lot of trouble. Zekka going to fly on over, does find the Arise, and then the Sand Soldiers will finish the job. Doran actually getting the kill kind of big here as well. Could we be looking at exactly what I was saying before, where it's T1 falling down 0-2, as this might mean no, as Dawning Shadow is going to fly on over as well. And there goes 
the Azir. Now, Doran, that is an unfortunate teleport. If ever I've seen one, as Carrier with a celebratory faceplant. Uh, Doran's teleporting his flash as well, but... Okay, Hook is going to connect here as there's the ulti out from Viper. Faker now in a whole lot of trouble as the Piercing Darkness comes in, but the flash forward from Viper says no. And now the Mega Cone from Gumiushi still. Viper able to get these burst fires over, just dashes over the wall. Delight also having to flash away as there's a flash Empress Divide, but it's whipped entirely from Zekker and T1 will punish immediately. Now Viper still trying to get damage down, able to buffer. That gold card nicely, but now with a man advantage, T1, they might... These extender beams are scary. There is the hook in, but he's not as tanky as he was last game. And Delight will just immediately get punished. Enot has flash. Yeah, they want to try and get on in here. Doran's at full health now as Viper has pressed that ultimate button. This is kind of a Zeri fight, and he's going to take out Zayas first. Into the pit they go, but the Baron is still going to go over to T1. So still their advantage, and Zekka will teleport in, but it's a bit too late. There's another flash forward here as Empress Divide is going to be used just to get Zayas out of here. The ulti comes through from Viper. He does do a lot of damage, but T1, the Phalanx has been put together. And there goes Zekka once again. Oh, feels like Zekka, that play from earlier on. A little bit of a gank attempt there from T1. 44 minute, uh, seconds prior to this Baron. Ooh, Kina. She could be in trouble. This might to break the shield. Does manage to find the ulti. And boom goes the dynamite. Six and zero now. For to Peanut here, as it was probably wearing off, and now Delight going to answer with that death charge. The flash over from Viper, the Assassin Zeri! And Owner is going to kick him away, but it's not going to be anything that's actually able to help out here. Is now Carrier taking damage, Owner will be taken down, there goes the Jungler! And T1 are falling apart! That ultimate from earlier, Peanut finds the Arctic Assault Flash, and Zayas will be taken down. His opposite number picking up the double, and there's the Baron for Hummelheim. Carrier, very tanky. See if he can get his way out of this one. Delight is going to find Zayas. In goes Doran as well, and they will be able to lock him down. Gumiushi, he just pops like a balloon, but still, Delight taking a lot of damage. The package delivered. Ona looks for the opportunity. Empress Divide avoided, but he can't avoid the prison. And now Faker has to flash away. He does manage to take down the Jack. The extended beam avoided as well. There's the control ward. It goes down. Zayas is going to get knocked up, and there is nothing he could do about it. Viper, 9 0 and 4 on the Zeri. He has gone from problem to disaster for T1, and Hamalay Beastwards are going to head towards his Baron Pit and look to try and push for the final time. Still bearing down on the base, and now Doran goes in. He finds the Counter Strike onto Zayas, and now Zekka gets in there. The explosion of damage is now they're in range of Viper, and that means that it's Hanwalai Beastwards in range of winning this series with match point now available. Exactly. On this Zeri, he was funneled all of the money. Truck, so a little bit concerned here for T1 once again. Well, we'll just have to see how it goes. This particular battle, Blastcone comes on over. There's the flash forward, and Ona locks down first blood. Immediately it is answered, and somehow it's in fact Peanut that locks down the kill. And there is first blood, but an assist going over to Harmon Life Esports, so the gold is dead even. Yeah, I guess. See here, Carrier is hit by a rain of arrows, and I was just checking Peanut. to see the summoner spells. Is okay, Peanut's coming on over. There's the flash forward as Carrier does so much damage. Peanut's burning down! It's a one for one once again, but I don't think Peanut was expecting to die. As now Carrier looks to come in, he is definitely. Never mind! The Fates Call comes on down, Viper is burning, and Carrier is able to lock that one down. Zekka was free food there under the turret, and that's going to be lapped up by Faker. And finally, they get a kill advantage. Gonna have to walk down the red carpet. There's a flash in! As once again they've got Fates Call, and so he can freely do this. The hook is going to go wide as Ona is once again back, and the Leap Strike will lock down the kill. And now Delight is trying to grab one back. We'll be able to do so as Carrier will help grab some plate gold. Weaver's Wall going to come in as well as Zekka. He came from the other direction. That's absolutely insane. As now Peanut diving on in. Wind becomes... Maybe she's at full health. They're still going to go for this dive. Threaded Volley is fantastic. There's the seismic shove and Peanut. He wasn't going to die to that one. They'll take the plate and they'll take the kill. And Viper gets a plate mid. No answer from Faker who had to teleport to make the play happen in the first place to play these fights out. As yeah. whenever we peel up to here, I'm always like, somebody hiding in the brush? We have all vision on. Speaking of hiding, uh, Charm is going to connect onto Peanut here, but the Weaver's Wall is going to come on down. Faker does get out of the way of the rocks, but he's just going to get taken out. The flash was already used, and he's just going to die. And now we're taxiing over to Gumiyushi, who's also taking massive damage. Pe Still the empowered one, not going to connect. There's Peanut flashing in. Um, um, okay, I'm not sure about that one, but the threat of Volley will save him. Uh, it was almost a leap strike in power, and uh, it was just doomed as, okay, Hook going to connect. 
on to Carrier once again. Chains of Corruption, pretty powerful as well. And Carrier keeping himself alive for so long, but will finally go down. And it's a two for one again here for Harmer Life Esports. But Faker closing in. Kumiyushi still here as well. Charm going to land. And Faker just pops like a balloon. Delight has been a god today, and that's not going to end in this game. He has the Titan's Wrath, and Zayus, nothing he can do 1v4. Delight is just insane. The guy just knows how much he could do, how much he could take in terms of damage. He has no fear. He was also, uh, does try to get on top of Viper, but he's just not low enough. No execution available. Immediate teleport from Doran gets him towards his top side so that there is no cross map play to be had. And man, Humble Life Esports came to play today. And you can just feel the desperation oh, out of T1. One. One as the Q connecting, Carrier just gonna get wiped out by Zekka on his Talia that's starting to become also getting taken down relatively low, but that double knockup was too good! And now Faker is having to get out of there, it's not going to work out. Still it's a fair bit of damage, but it is not enough, they are too strong. Still into the back line goes Zeus. Zekka able to find a lot of damage onto the Rek'Sai, and he shouldn't be able to get out. Still, those couple of kills onto the bottom lane could be important to try and keep T1 in there. Still, it's going to be in the ace, and it should still be the Baron for Hummelite. But now still with this. All right, Doran, I'm not sure about this one, but still, he pops the World Ender. He's going to go down, but Carrier should follow suit. Zayus gets back underneath his turret. Faker is just in the side lane trying to get them whatever bounty gold they can find. And it's working, and uh, which they are going to be able to do. Yeah, and at the cost of their inhibitor turret here, Ezeka is also pushing mid. He does have three items. He's very tanky, but Hamalife Esports, they are looking to take down this inhibitor turret. And so much poke available here as well, and there's a hook that's going to connect. The charm lands onto Viper. Zayus gets into the back line as well, and Viper is going to be taken out. Delight is extraordinarily low. They take down the Rumble, but T1, this is the best fight they've had so far. And Gumiushi is still untouched. Doran trying to get some work done, but he goes all the way into the sky. Oh my god, never you mind. This Aatrox is too big, and he's just jumping all over the top of T1. Doesn't find the charm as Delight will find the hook onto the wreck side. Not exactly an optimal target. And now Peanut, he's going in. Equalizer goes down. Crescent got my god, this damage is disgusting. And Armor Life will just get rid of the bottom lane immediately. The knockup comes in, the prepared seismic shove. And yeah, that Void Rush not going to be enough to save the wreck side this time. And Armor Life, a 3-0. Over T1 in round two of playoffs. T1 will now have to face off against D plus Kia in the lower bracket. A very, very